So you may have come across this fish finder hack because it's all over YouTube for using a level and some pocket change to level out your transducer. Well, I put it to the test and let me tell you, it's complete bull But don't take my word for it. Come with me, we're gonna go on the water, we're gonna do a comparison before leveling and after leveling so that you can make a decision for yourself if this is actually worth your time. Okay, so for this video, I'm using the coin trick for leveling my transducer. And I'm not gonna get into all the steps, but it's pretty simple. You just stack coins underneath a level while you're driving your boat at speed. Now you take that same measurement and when you pull your boat out of the water, you use that angle to level out the transducer such that as you drive your boat at speed, the transducer sits level with the boat. Okay, so after leveling my transducer using the coin trick, we can finally get out on the water and do some tests. So the first thing that I noticed when I looked at the before and after images is that the left side of those side images on after leveling the transducer appear much darker than before leveling. Now this is because that side is the side that's facing towards the outboard motor. So the lower unit is actually blocking that side of the side images. When you have a smaller boat such as mine, leveling the transducer may actually give you worse quality than if you have a, sl a slight downward tilt. Um, and that's because in this case, I had my outboard motor trimmed completely up, but even after doing so, was not able to compensate for the interference on the left side due to the lower unit. Okay, so at the end of all of these tests, I wasn't really able to tell conclusively if there was a huge difference in image quality between before leveling and after leveling. What I did notice, however, is when I had my transducer pointed down that the shadows appeared to be much darker and they also appeared to be a little bit more exaggerated. Now, one other thing I wanted to point out is when you look at the after leveling shot, you can see that there are vertical lines or bands of areas that were darker. Now, this is because the transducer itself was being impacted by the waves. Okay, so if you've made it far into this video, you might be asking yourself, okay, so this guy did a test and it turns out when he leveled his transducer, he had some in issues with interference from prop wash and the lower unit. Well, for my case, maybe I have a bigger boat and maybe those things aren't applicable, right? Well, for you, I would encourage you to continue to watch this video because I go into some detail and I did quite a bit of research on, it's actually in, in in the scientific term, it's called the grazing angle. So this is the angle at which the transducer sits in relativity to uh, the boat or whatever platform that it's scanning from. So I did quite a bit of tests and because I knew it was too difficult to try to do this on the water, I created a computer program that simulated uh, different uh, grazing angles and um, at the end of it all, I determined that the best grazing angle was a 10 degree downward tilt of the transducer. But if you don't believe me and you still think I'm full of shit, then continue watching because I'm gonna show you the simulation. I'm gonna show you some of the research that's been done around this area and you can determine whether or not this is bullshit or whether there is some merit to this. So continue watching and let's go check it out. Okay, so for my simulation, I created a whole new world inside of a 3D program called Blender. Now, <clears throat> I created a lake um, about 30 feet deep, uh, a model of my boat, the transducer, as well as the transducer beam itself. Now, the beam is pretty simple. What I did is I created a light source from that transducer that goes out at an 86 degree angle. And according to my research, this was the angle that Garmin uses. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's the closest I could find. So in this 3D program, um, we're gonna be running through two simulations. So the first simulation is using a completely level transducer. Um, the light beam is 86 degrees at a 10,000 lumen rate, and it's shooting through water, okay? And what you're gonna be looking at is the difference between the shadows and because that's really what 
That's really the piece of information that the transducer is receiving. You're also looking at the returns, so the backscatter, so that is the actual, um, the fish itself, which uh, fish or structure itself might appear as like bright yellow if you're in the amber color palette. You'll, you'll see a bright return and then you'll see the corresponding shadow, right? So that shadow itself is going to be the detail that you're gonna be looking at and you want the best shadows that you can get. Um, but running through that simulation using those, uh, those both different parameters, you can clearly see that that 10 degree angle has a pretty, pretty large impact on the quality of the shadows. So the shadows are much darker, especially for the fish and even for the objects that are further to the side, like the, the branches and the rocks. Uh, from my perspective, there is a pretty measurable difference between um, the completely level transducer and the 10 degree angle transducer. Um, the 10 degree angle produces a slightly larger, more exaggerated, darker shadows. And the reason why you'd want that is because you want to be able to distinguish between fish and a rock, right? So you don't want to look at a shadow and say, I'm not really sure if that's a rock or a fish, right? You want to be able to say that is a fish or that is a rock or that is a, a, a you know, a tree branch or something, right? A shell bed. So in my case, running through this simulation, actually proving to you guys that clearly it's when you change that angle, you're changing the way that those shadows and the information that that transducer is receiving such that you get the best quality images. So I hope this has helped you understand that the optimal angle for your transducer for side imaging is gonna be that 10 degree down angle. Okay, so by now you probably already learned the difference between having an angle transducer and having your transducer completely level. Now in my experience, angling the transducer worked very well for me in terms of the side imaging performance. Um, my program also showed that there was an improvement in that quality. But if you've already have your transducer installed and you're already getting great side imaging, then there's no reason to um, try to fix something that's not broken. So um, my advice to you out there is if you're experiencing issues or if you think the quality could be a little bit better, go ahead and tilt that transducer down. If not, just keep it the way that things are. Well, thanks again for watching guys. And I've got a lot more fish finder videos on the way. So if you're interested in learning more about how fish finders work, or if you'd like to have the upper hand in your next tournament, hit that subscribe button below so you can learn more and you can be a master and outfish all your friends. Thanks again for watching. See you guys on the next one.